Today on The Joy of Editing, we're exploring the Film Effects Vintage Filter in Nick 8 Color Effects and how it can add a beautiful classic film style to your images. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. We're continuing our journey through the filters in Nick 8 Color Effects, and this time we're going to see how Film Effects Vintage can change the mood of an image I'll walk you through a few different examples so you can see how this classic film look can work in all kinds of photos. Before we dive into the examples, I want to let you know that DxO is running their Black Friday sale right now with up to 50% off all DxO software. And you can save an extra 5% on new purchases when you use my code DAVEKELLY at checkout with the DxO links in the description of this video. I do earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and it really helps support the channel, so thank you. And now let's go ahead and dive right in. Now I have three different examples for you. The first one is this portrait. Now let's see what we can do with the vintage filter on this one. If we look at the right side of the interface under filters, you see I've already added the Film Effects Vintage Filter. I'll click right here and turn it on, and now you can see these are the default settings. Now let's take a look at the controls. We have a saturation adjustment, a warmth adjustment, warmth or cooling. You can warm it up when you move it to the right, cool it down to the left. We have a vignette, a brightness, grain per pixel, so we can add some vintage grain to the image, and the uh, grain engine in color effects is really awesome. It's very authentic film grain, and then we have film strength. And then we have film types. And if I click the drop down, you can see we start here at one and we go the whole way down here to 28. And you just hover over the different numbers and you can see how they're affecting the image. Now for this image, I went through several of these and I ended up liking nine. Now right now it doesn't look that great, but I'll show you what we can do because you don't want to stop right here. Now for me, I think the image looks way too bright, so I'll start with the brightness slider. Let's drag this to the left and darken it up a bit, and maybe I'll take it. Let's go right around here. Now you'll notice it's light around the edges. That's due to the vignette, and it defaults at a light vignette, which is typical on an old vintage image. You get those faded out edges, but maybe that's too light so I could pull this in a little bit. Maybe somewhere right around here looks more realistic. Or we could go to the left of zero and start to darken this up a bit, depending what kind of a look you want. But I think I want it a little bit lighter. Maybe like right about here looks pretty good. Now let me play with the brightness a little bit more. Maybe I'll just lighten it up just a little bit. Maybe right there. And now for warmth, we can warm it up more by moving this to the right, or we could cool it down to the left. So depending what look you like, I think I like it a little warm, but not too warm. Maybe right about here looks pretty good. And then we do have an opacity slider. So if you think the effect is too strong, you can take the overall opacity back and blend some of the original image in if you like. On this image, maybe I will just pull that back a little bit to maybe right about here. Now at this point, once you dial things in here, you may want to go back to film type and revisit some of the different film types and see what they look like now that you have the adjustments up here dialed in. Okay, so that's a little tip for you. But I do like 9, so we're going to stick with 9 on this one. Now if I shut this off, here's before and here's after. And don't forget you have the split screen as well. You can drag this over. There's the before and there's the after. So pretty cool. I really enjoy vintage film effects, especially if you want to stylize your image a bit or give your image that vintage look. Now let's go ahead right up here. See right now we're fit to screen. We're at 87%. Let's go ahead and zoom into 400% so we can see what the green looks like. And right now we're at 410 by default. Let me move this to the left and the green will increase. You see that, but it's really nice, realistic film green. So we'll go the whole way over so you can really see it. If you don't want any green, just drag this over to 500, but I want a little bit in there because after all, it is a vintage film effect. And now if we click right here, we can fit the screen again. And also note, we do have local adjustments if you need them. On this image, I don't really need them. And now let's move on to our second example. This is a really nice image. Let's see what we can do with this. Right now, film effects vintage is turned off, so I'll turn it on by clicking right here. 
This is the default setting. Now we always start at film type two. And one thing I do want to point out, you'll notice that the saturation by default is pulled back because on vintage film looks, we generally have a little less saturation. So that's the point of having this turned back a little bit. Of course, you could always turn it up if you feel you need it. But for this image, a little less saturation will really give it a nice look. Maybe right about here. Let's try some different film types. So we'll come to the film type, click in the drop down. Let's look at one. That's one. I really like that too. Let's look at some of the different ones in here. Boy, this image really works well with this uh, vintage filter. Okay. You know what? I like number one. So let's click on one. And now let's tweak this up a bit. I'll start with saturation. Let me pull it back a little more. You know what? I may go back a little bit more in the saturation right there. Looks good. Let's play with the warmth. Do we want it cooler? No, I like it warmer. Let's go warmer. Maybe right about here looks pretty good. Now the vignette, I do like the light vignette. Do we want it lighter? No, not as light. Maybe right around here. But let's check it out on the darker side of things. You know, depending what you want, that could be nice. But I think I want it lighter. I don't want to go too light, but I want that nice faded out edges on this image. Looks really good. This is more of a stylized look for me in this image. So what I think I'll do is shut off the grain by dragging this the whole way to the right. Let me play with the brightness. Let me darken it up just a little wee bit. Not too much. I like the light look in this image. Maybe right about here. And opacity. We can always pull this back if we want. But no, I like this up the whole way here. Let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. Let's do the split screen. I'll click right here. So we started out here and now we're here. I think I'll pull the saturation back a little bit more to maybe right about here. And I think this has a really nice stylized magazine type look to it right now. I really like the vintage film effect on this image. I'll shut off the filter. Here's before. And here's after. Yeah, I really like the effect here. Hey, if you're enjoying these tutorials, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. This really helps to promote my channel. So when you do that, I appreciate it. And leave comments and questions. I really love hearing from you. And now for our last image, more of a landscape travel image. I'll turn on the vintage filter by clicking right here. Again, we defaulted film type two. Let's go through some of the different film types. There's one. Let's go through these. A lot of cool ones in here. And for this one, after going through these, I ended up going with like 23. So let's click on that. And now let's make some adjustments. Do we want it warmer? Eh, maybe right about here. Let's try the brightness. Maybe I'll darken it up just a little wee bit. Not too much. Maybe right about here. How about the vignette? Maybe there's too much vignette on there. Let's pull that back a little bit. I do want those edges to be nice and glowy like they are. Kind of faded looking right about there. And now film strength. We can make this a stronger effect by moving this to the right. I think I forgot to show you that in the other ones. Or drag it the whole way to the left and really turn that film strength down. So don't forget about that film strength. Okay, so let's turn this up a good bit. Maybe right about here. And as far as saturation, maybe we'll pull back the saturation a bit, just a little wee bit, just to give it that old vintage look, maybe somewhere right about there. And again, don't forget, you can click on your film type and then hover over the different film types and see if there's something else you like more in there. But I think I'm going to stick with 23. Now I'll shut this off. Here's before. And now here is after. Do you know what? On this one, I think I'll take the opacity and pull this back a little bit and let a little bit of the original image show through. Maybe right about here. Now here's before and here's after. Yeah, I think I like that a little bit better. Well, there you have it. I hope you give the Film Effects Vintage Filter a try right here in Nick 8 Color Effects. It's a really good one. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's look into the Film Effects Vintage Filter and Nick 8 Color Effects. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, 
you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.